In football, running, running, and more running, it's just part of the game. All this running can put players at risk for a painful and all too common condition called medial tibial stress syndrome. You probably know it as shin splints. Hi, I'm Dr. Max Gomez, and this is CONCACAF's Winner's Health, your football source for keeping players healthy and in the game. Shin splints, or MTSS, which stands for medial tibial stress syndrome, refers to a painful condition that develops along the middle to lower third of the tibia or shin bone. It's a very common injury in sports like football that involve lots of running, and for good reason. Running is extremely stressful on the bones and muscles of the leg. As the player runs, each foot strike delivers a shock wave that travels up the length of the leg. This energy must be absorbed by the musculoskeletal system. That's a lot of pounding to take, especially over time. There are different theories as to what precisely causes MTSS. Some think it comes from the bowing action of the bone as it bends to absorb shock. Others believe it comes from the pulling action of the muscles and their connecting tissues on the surface of the bone. Shin splints are an overuse injury, not from a single traumatic event, such as getting tackled. Um, usually it occurs in runners or other impact sports, and it's caused by where the muscle is pulling on the bone or the lining of the bone called the periosteum. And it's felt that when those muscles are weak or imbalanced and they pull on the bone over and over, it can start to cause pain by causing some inflammation at that lining of the bone. It's the repetition of stress to bones and muscles that causes the problem building up under the radar, undetected by the player, sometimes for weeks, until a tipping point is reached, when the force load on the bones and muscles has finally gone beyond what the leg can tolerate. Usually a player will know that they're having shin splints. They start to get pain on the inside of their lower leg or shin area. Um, and it may be the kind of thing in the beginning where they just have a little bit of pain and then they sort of warm up and the pain seems to go away. And then if they ignore it or if they continue to play, that pain may progress to the point where they have pain more continuously or even after playing. In fact, you can use the location of the pain to help you figure out what you've got. Take your fingers and apply pressure to the inside part of your shin bone. If it hurts along a series of points on the middle to lower part of the shin bone, that's a sign you may have shin splints. You can also test your pain by doing a few simple movements, like hopping first on one leg, then the other, standing on your toes, stretching your calf with a bent knee. If you feel pain to touch, coupled with pain from any or all of these actions, see a doctor. Whatever you do, don't try to play through it. You'll only make it worse. Players seem to be most vulnerable to shin splints at the beginning of the season, the first three or four weeks of training. Players have been off. Their leg bones and muscles aren't in peak condition. And now they have to run and jump, sometimes for hours on end, on legs that aren't yet ready to handle all the new stress. So shin splints happen more at the beginning of the season because you're starting to load more stress on bone. The key to preventing that is to make sure you keep a good training regimen in the off season so your bone isn't shocked as much when you all of a sudden get out and start moving around a lot on it. Drastically changing the intensity of your workouts, as is typical in early season training, doesn't give your shin bones and muscles enough time to adjust, enough time to grow stronger in response to new levels of stress. Even changing the running surface you're training on can cause problems. The transition can be a shock, going from running on grass to concrete or hardwood floors, or from running on a level field to training on hills. Change, of course, is a two-way street. It may cause problems, but it can also be used to your advantage by simply changing what you're doing. If running on concrete is causing you pain, go back to grass. If it's running downhill, try running on level ground. And then, of course, there's your shoes. Changing your footwear may actually help. If you have either flat feet or high arches, your body may not absorb shock as well as it needs to. Changing to shoes with proper arch supports can make a big difference. If you're training on a hard surface, shoes with more cushioning may be a good idea. What you want is for your feet, your shoes, and the surface they're running on to all be in harmony. 
For someone with shin splints, I recommend rest, and it depends on how significant their symptoms are. Sometimes you need to completely hold them out of activities, and sometimes you can modify what activities they're doing to try to minimize their symptoms. Ice is also important. Anti-inflammatories for a short period of time may be helpful. Also, there's some evidence that massage, stretching, and strengthening of the muscles that attach to that area of the bone may be helpful. Recovery can take from three weeks to four months. That's a long time to be out of the game or away from training. You can still stay in shape, though, by cross-training. Try leg or arm cycling, swimming, deep water running, any exercise that won't aggravate your lower leg. The best way to fight shin splints is really with common sense. Think preventatively. Gradually build up exercise intensity in early season training. Add proper stretching and strengthening to your program and factor in rest breaks. Your legs work hard for you. Sometimes you need to give them a break too. Thanks for joining us for CONCACAF's Winner's Health. Take care and stay healthy. For more information about shin splints, please visit CONCACAF.com.